Good evening, doctors and good evening, students. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to our second presentation for our CC project, which will be tackling the redesign of the superstructure of the Hoover Dam Bridge, presented by Karim Rabia, Nasmin Hakim, Andrew Naim, Saif Noir, and myself, Amr Sos. So, first, to uh, introduce you to our, our client, our first up is going to be an introduction. We are going to uh, remind you uh, what was our main uh, project and then moving on to our objective and the scope of work the preliminary dimensioning of the <coughs> system that we uh, proposed the different loads of combinations that we used from the ash to LRD the analysis philosophy that we used and our modeling techniques the analysis results and we are going to end up by the progress and our data schedule so uh, our project is mainly uh, a project that, that has already been accomplished in the year 2010. It's a Hoover Dam bridge, a very famous bridge that was done in the United States between the state of Arizona and the state of Nevada. And it is surpassing the Colorado River. This is the map, uh, this is the dimensions of the, of the existing structure. The span, the free span is around 333 meters. And the total bridge length is around 580 meters. Our proposed objective is to redesign the bridge superstructure with an alternative solution, which is the cable state bridge. Our scope of work will be the complete structure analysis of the system, the design of the superstructure components, which includes the bridge deck, the diaphragms, the pylons, and the cables. Then, we're going to talk about the construction sequence analysis. How did we accomplish this and how is this possible to be done like in real life? And we're going to end with the structure drawings. Now, my colleague Andrew is going to talk about the preliminary dimensions of the project. Let me first introduce quickly our preliminary dimensions that we have chosen according to the letter, literature review as well as the limitation of the group. Uh, we have two uh, size bands of 96, this is an elevation of the bridge, we have two size span of 96 meters, uh, the middle span is 388 meters. We'll get the volume here. Uh, okay. We have, uh, as you can see, that elevation for one side of the bridge, we have uh, 16 cables in the middle span and uh, only seven back stays. The spacing between cables is 12 meters. Uh, the height, our height to pipe, uh, height to pipe to span ratio is 0.2c, which falls in the range, uh, conventional range. This will enable us to reduce the quantity of steel that we will, would need in the cables. Uh, our size span to mid span ratio is 0.2, which is quite low. Uh, and that doesn't provide us uh, quite symmetry about the pilot. However, uh, that's our, that's the, we are limited, limited by our by the geography. Uh, as of well, that, uh, the depth of the deck is ranging from 2.5 meters uh, at, at the middle to 3.5 meters uh, at the pilot location. Then we talk about the deck. Our deck is a uh, our section is a RC uh, trapezoidal uh, box girder. Uh, the limitation for the, the code to the code provides some limitations about the dimensions of the, uh, the box girder. It's zero uh, limitations, and then the dimensions of our of our the girder in the model is these are the, the dimensions of the, the model: 150 millimeter for the web, 300 millimeter for the top slab, uh, 250 millimeter for the uh, bottom slab, and as you, as you all know the the whole uh, deck width is 28 meters. Uh, we have two, two main diaphragms. Uh, each, each one of them is 6 meters uh, six meter, uh, six meter thick. And they are located under the pylons. We have uh, our first filters are 24, 24 meters apart. And their uh, thickness is 0.6 meters. One of the tables we choose to, uh, to adapt a fan system uh, type tables. Uh, due to its efficiency as well as its uh, uh, freedom about uh, for the geometric adaption. Our type of cables is bar bar wire strand uh, cables. This type of cables is conventional for the for most of the cable state bridges. 
Wenn ich aber Menschen auf der Kippe 8 cm, 9 cm, 10 cm von der Stehkirche, aber our next, our next stays are only 10 cm und our anchor pin is 35 cm. Das sind Material Properties. Und für die Bayern, ich habe die Höhe über der Deck Service 90 m, die Höhe über der Deck Service 106 m. Die Prozession der Bayern ist 4x4 Solid Pylon. Und wir haben die Radius und die Rechen, also das ist das Standard Ratio für die Bayern, um zu sicherstellen, dass unsere Bayern die Kategorie von den Standard Problems haben. Und dann werden wir uns sicher, um unsere Philosophie zu modellieren. Für die Modellierung, wir haben zwei Ratio. This one is a free element, which is a total spine, and the second one is an array element, and the third one is a uh, root. Till, till now, we only used the first two uh, methods, and we didn't get to the second one. The first one is a free element for the deck. Uh, we modeled the deck by defining it to the section design, which is a property set, and we entered the dimensions, and then the program has created the properties of this uh, deck. And then we assign the neck to this frame element as shown, the middle one, and we model the behavior of the neck. Uh, secondly, we, uh, second for modeling of cables, we model the cables as cable elements, and we define the uh, parameters and models of the system and position of the frame of expansion, as well as the design stress, which is 800 megapixels. Uh, concerning the of things, you can see that uh, there are horizontal components that are connecting the uh, joints. Which has a cable attached to it to the payment uh, to, to, to let the software understand the corners of the space material. Uh, for the bearings, they are, they are modeled as uh, links that are divided to activities. And lastly, we have a lifetime that controllers want to define them through the section designer with the program, and then we assign them on, on the pain elements every 24 minutes. And just to add something, uh, the frame element that gives us the, the optimal behavior of the deck. Uh, therefore, we we'll use the solution factors that are negated in the action to get the exact moment of the serial printer and the serial printer. With the advantages, the, the frame element gives us accurate results for the initial cable forces, and also it has a, a faster completion of time compared to the area element. And the last advantage is that uh, what it gives us from our modeling of the material data. It is advantages, it uh, gives us more indication for the kinds of selections on the deck, and also it always makes the other material uh, actions. Secondly, the A elements. Uh, we modeled the uh, top slab and bottom slab, as well as the material and external uh, webs and uh, thin shine elements, and we want the mesh to be 20 meters, which is considered large, however, we we put it like that to uh, faster the computation time because it takes very long time and we could run it to the uh, Now I'm going to explain the bearing configuration. We have bearing at the buttons and uh, so what is the bearing? The bearing is a structural element that, uh, that, is, that is between the deck and the buttons and both ends of the bridge. For our project, we are going to choose the steel reinforcement for less dramatic bearing. Uh, the function of this bearing is that it accommodates movement in certain directions and based on our design. In our case, we make it gradually more suddenly and restrain the movement in the transverse, uh, transverse uh, direction and vertical direction. Uh, here are the initial dimensions, which are the area 65 cm by 65 and the height is 10 cm. The longitudinal <coughs> is uh, based on the shear stiffness, which is a function of the area and the height and we obtain the shear modulus from the supply gap. While at the pylons, the pylons on the deck were clustered to uh, the velocity to increase the motion and rigidity of the bridge as cable state bridges are known to be, uh, are known to be flat. And now I will leave my previous thing to explain the rules. Uh, the rules that we are considering with the eyes of our bridge consists mainly of gravity rules and uncertainty. For gravity loops, we have permanent loops and transient loops. The permanent loops are the loops that stay on the bridge for a long period of time, uh, including the little loop structure and the structure elements and other uh, non structure elements, in addition to the little loop wearing surface. The transient loop is the loop that changes the time, including the light loop. Uh, 
that uh, to, to calculate the number of uh, design lanes in our bridge, uh, it is uh, the distance between barriers, the clear distance between barriers divided by 3.6 meters. So we end up to have three lanes in each direction, with one pedestrian road in each direction. To compute the life load, we have the, we selected the HL 90 according to Ashton. We have design truck, design table, and design lane. To design truck, as you can see in this picture, we have the, the axle load, the front axle load uh, weighs 25 kilometers, the drive load uh, weighs 145 kilometers, and the uh, rear one is 145 kilometers. For design table, we have the two axes, each one axis, each one weighs 110 kilometers, and for the design lane, we have a unit distributed load of uh, 9.3 kilometers. In addition, we have a pedestrian life loop, uh, which is 1.09 km per meter. Okay. Uh, this is the design lane. Uh, we also have accounted for the braking force, which is 25% of the axle load, applied at 1.8 meters above the left. So we have two ways in, for modeling it, either by dynamic frame and applying that load at the top of it, or applying a, a force and moment at the left end. And we did the second move. For temperature, we have, a uniform, we have two types of temperature, either uniform temperature or temperature <coughs> gradient. For the uniform temperature, it's the temperature changing uniformly with the superstructure. However, in temperature gradient, as you can see here in the picture, uh, it's, uh, it changes non uniformly. As you can see at the, at the top, it changes rapidly more than at the bottom because of the, the, the sun and the weather. The second type of uh, loads we have the lateral loads, including five meter loading and one loading. These are the loads and the uh, load combinations. For wind analysis, we have two main effects, either static, static effect or dynamic effect. The static effect assumes that the wind has a constant, a constant velocity and direction. However, in the dynamic, it takes into consideration the dynamic effect of wind, which is a bar which, is, which varies with time. Therefore, we have three main factors in wind, which are vortex chilling, fluttering, and curves. Therefore, to account for these effects, aerodynamic analysis is made using the software to Aerodynamics is a study of air flow around and through the wind. The wind force has mainly two forces. Drag force and left force. The drag force is the force uh, in the direction of the flow. However, the left force is the uh, perpendicular to the flow, and it's uh, the difference between the pressure upward and downward of the, the process. To model our uh, to model our depth uh, in the flow, we have to first to uh, calculate the unit number to know if the flow is turbulent or laminar, and if uh, it was uh, turbulent because it's greater than five times ten. So it's turbulent uh, And we substitute it in that equation by uh, rho equal to 1.225 meters per kilogram per second, and the velocity equal to 43.8 given the specification. And the length 28 meters, and the velocity equal to 1.78 times 24 kilograms per second. So we have three main alternatives for our. The first one with an overhang of one meter each direction. That one. The second one without without an overhang, the one at the, at the top. And the third one with the with a flaring part, which means a triangular part at, attached at the end of the of the uh, For each one of them, we uh, analyze the we analyze the pressure distribution. For the for the left with an overhang, as you can see, there is very turbulence and pressure concentration at the uh, at, at the front edge of the deck, and you have a drag force of 3.05 kN per meter and depth force of negative 2.02 kN per meter. However, when we omitted that overhang, the the drag force has reduced to 1.9 kN per meter and the force has increased to negative 13.8 kilometers per meter. 
the point that we would add the sharing part, the drag force is, the, is reduced more to, to become 1.3 kilometers per meter, and that's force negative 7.4 kilometers per meter. After analyzing these three, uh, these three cross sections, we can conclude that with the aspect ratio of the thickness to the level become smaller than one, much, much smaller than one, the difference in pressure between the port and rear port become much smaller to so the draft ports become less. So better aerodynamics, as you can see here in the flare part, that the this level become that the area become in closer to a point. That's why the difference between here and the port here and the first and the, the, the other part become very less than the other one, uh, in which we have a, a more uh, therefore, the recommended one, uh, the recommended cross section in our uh, in our analysis is the one with the flying point. And this is with the uh, three point five. We have a varying uh, in the cross section. And now we are going to move to the cross section. The construction sequence analysis is one of the most important stages in the analysis and design process of bridge uh, engineering and get the state bridge. In order to do a construction sequence analysis, we have to come up with a construction method for the bridge, and we recommend the double sided peak and deeper method, in which the two pylons are completely constructed first, and then the deck is segmentally constructed from the pylons from both sides, and then the cables are installed in the deck segments, and the B tension forces at the cables are applied. Finally, when the bridge is completely constructed, the load is transferred directly from the deck to the cable. For construction sequence analysis, there are certain types of loads that should be considered during the analysis during construction phases. For our construction sequence analysis, we consider the dead load of the structure and the differential load, which is over, which is two percent of the dead load, applied only in one cantilever side. Also, we applied, we applied a miscellaneous construction distributed life load of 0.48 kN per meter on one side and 0.24 kN per meter on the other side. The construction equipment load, we had to assume an equipment that would be used in the construction process. It was a direct crane weighting 20 tons applied on one can leave side to reduce the most severe effect. To simplify our analysis, we considered the most critical case, which was the last case before the two sides of the bridges are connected together. It's when the two sides of the bridge are cantilevered from the two pylons. So we apply the dead load the, and the construction load on this stage in the two cantilevers. And then we added the last segment and the dead load, the last thing is only considered this stage. And finally, when the bridge is completely done, the life load and other load combinations are applied on the bridge. The way we tackled this uh, problem in uh, modeling, we defined the load case, which was a non-linear p that the load case, considering, considering the dead load of the two cantilevers and the cable, for, the cable emission forces. And then using the stiffness of this stage, we applied the load of the last method only. And then using also the stiffness of the previous stage, we applied the light load and the load combinations. Here is an example of our results. Applying the cable forces on the two cantilevers gave us a camper of 1.2 meters. And then when the last segment is added, the deflection reduced to 0.943 meters. And finally, this is for a stand one group operation. The deflection was negative 0.146 meters at the med span. For the cable initial forces, it was a very complicated and iterative process. First, we the cable initial forces are for to make sure that the dead load of the bridge before applying any life load or other load combinations won't su suffer from any excessive deflection. So we want to make sure that at the cable points, the connection between the cables and the deck won't deform excessively. So the first our first try was to apply to insert hinges at the points where the cables were reconnected and to see the reaction from these hinges and they distribute it to the cable direction and apply it as a cable pre-tension force. 
The second method was uh, to make sure that the steps of the the steps of the cables are counted for in the calculating the initial cable forces. We use the very high stiffness springs with the cables, and then we, we determine the vertical action of the springs, distributing it also according to the cable angle, and applying it, adding it to the already existing cable forces to see if the deflection is satisfactory or not. The third one is the frame elements. In this method, we model the cables are as frame elements, and then we apply compression limit is zero to make sure that it won't suffer any compression. We're only for will only be for tension. And we release also the moments in the cables. It gave us a very good uh, results, however, it didn't consider the sagging effect of the cables. And the last one is to consider to, to get the cable initial forces, and this one was the one we actually used, is during the construction sequence, the first at the last stage when the two cleavers are, are existing, we run a first trial without applying any forces in the cables. And we see the deflection, and we see the cable forces. And then we extract these cable forces, and multiplying them by an arbitrary magnification factor, and then try it again by a target force in the cables. And if the deflection is still not satisfactory, we do this again and again, until we reach a, a satisfactory deflection, which was the camper of 1.2 meters. Here's a sample of our results for the axial force in the deck, which is the horizontal component of the cable pretension forces. During the, this stage of construction, the axial force increased from the side until it reached maximum at the bottom. And then due to the change of planes of the cables, it starts increasing until it reaches minimum at the metal spell. And this is when the last segment is added. With the last thing, that's actually there is a tension that appeared in the last segment, which, is, which was a 4 meter last segment connecting the two sides of the bridge. And this can be totally eliminated by post tensioning this only in this last thing. And this is an example of our results. We still don't have all, all of our results. This is an example for the strength one group combination. This is also the moment diagram for the three stages considered. Our objective is to make sure that the axial force in the moment diagram will produce a totally non-cracked section, and that uh, the axial, the axial, that if, if this, this doesn't happen, we will consider this in the final tuning of the cable forces in a later stage of our analysis. And now I'm, I'm going to conclude our presentation. Okay, just to give you a recap of what we've been doing in the last couple of uh, and a half months, this is what we have reached uh, so far, and this is what we need to do for the remaining months. So I would say that we almost done with our literature review, which is sufficient enough to complete the seismic analysis. We have two methods. We have the response spectrum method, and we have another optional method, which is called the multiple support excitation. Uh, we also need to complete all the analysis cases. We need to incorporate the analysis results in our final design. And we need to produce the rest of our drawings. We've been working on the drawings already, and produce the calculation sheets. Uh, this is what we are at now. This is what, what, what we have accomplished already. I, we would say that we have, we've done with almost like 65% of the work, and the remaining is 35%. Because this part, hopefully, we'll be able to finish on time. These are our references, and thank you.
that will be resisted by the supports in order for the left to not hold the But this wouldn't account for the um, phenomena that you wrote before the vortex shedding and the uh, flutter. I Why? mean, the movement of the structure might change uh, the pressure caused by, uh, by the air. The vortex shedding is the, the, the turbulence and the vortex is the in front of the structure itself. So... Would be affected if the structure itself moved up or down? I mean, will it, is this uh, normally can be considered in the program, or the program is always like that? Well, it could be considered in the flow in 3D. It's another, it's another edition of the program. It's, it's very complicated. It actually simulates the, a wind tunnel, an exact wind tunnel, and it's uh, in a 3D model. Uh, what we mean by vortex study is when the wind actually bases a barrier. This is, this is what we consider. It's the pressure of the vortex shield is up or down. Yes. Well, I appreciate what you did. Uh, for the other uh, question, uh, for the dimensions that you took for the uh, pylon and for the deck, uh, these dimensions are similar to the original design or you are the ones who <coughs> determine that? Uh, we, we, we try to be as uh, similar as possible to the original design in terms of the free span, uh, but in order to have a symmetric design at the end for the backstage cable, we change the configuration a little and we use the code to determine the height of the pilot, for example, and the <coughs> number of cables, the dimensions of cables, and this kind of... Uh, well, we start with the deck. It's the same section. It's the same, same section. Same section, but it works uh, the skirter section. Uh, however, we got the dimensions from the code limitations that will have the literature of other projects, other similar projects. In the and we considered some bridges, similar bridges, similar in spans, similar in type. And then we came up with an average ratio in the depth and the span, the three span between the gates of the span. And that, that's what we have watched. So we started by preliminary dimensioning and with the help of the code equations. Yes, we changed the dimensions like more than a couple of times in order to reach the last uh, design. Mm -hmm. We changed the, the thicknesses of the... We, we changed the, for example, we changed the deck, the, the deck checks in for uh, like two or three times. And then we changed the web thickness. The first edition was the web thickness of 0.6 meters. This gave us a very high detail. So we increased it to 0.4. And then the web, the web section were, were, were straight. So we introduced some hunches in the web. We set it for the transfer section, the landing moment in the slab, the top slab. And we decreased the bottom slab thickness. Now, you have lost the internal force or not yet at that stage to check whether these dimensions are appropriate or not. Yeah, along with the analysis, we check the stresses in. That's why we introduced that our first solution uh, analysis didn't include any diaphragms. That's why we added the diaphragm at the pilot, because there were very high stresses at this section. And along with the analysis, we check that the moment goes beyond the moment capacity or the stresses goes beyond the compressive stress. For example, in the construction stage an analysis, actually requires that the compressive stress in all the stages doesn't exceed 0.5 of the, the, complete, uh, the complete compressive strength. And we make sure that this case uh, actually applies to our bridge. So actually you check the stresses. You make sure that the stresses are really allowed. Just preliminary, not very active calculations. You are going to show us this completion uh, in the final solution. Uh, now, uh, you said that you need to, that you don't have the uh, crack check section, all the sections are uncracked. I said we want, we want our objective is to make sure this, this it's as if it was a... Uh, is this a requirement that you have the sections, the uh, uncracked section? That's what the, we want to make use of the compressive force initiated in the deck due to the forces. That's why we didn't use any viscous in the post Well, I want to understand now to the under section according to what I know is that the precise stress in the concrete does not exceed uh, the uh, inside, around the precise stem. Yes. This is what we did? Yes. No, so this is, now we assume it was cracked at all. And we assume that it's an uncracked section. And then we can play the stresses according to the formula M Y over I plus T e over A. We make sure that the, the moment doesn't reduce any tension inside the stresses 
at the bottom fibers. In other words, we want to have a volume of steel portion. Sorry? No, we will have steel portion. Why don't you have a steel portion at the bottom edge? Why do you need to have the stresses to be on the bottom edge? Because the bottom edge is the bottom edge. 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 The bottom edge is this will save us, this is more, I think this is more economic because we already have the cables. So we're going to make use of the, the horizontal, uh, the horizontal component of the force of the cables. We have already, uh, we have already discussed with them the option of partial pre stressing We tried to simulate full pre stressing by making use of the horizontal force from the cables. But since anyway we have to have the enforcement, so we will discuss the option of using a uh, uh, partial pre stress option. So we Add minimum reinforcement uh, based on allowing some cracking, but not completely relying on that uh, since we already have the pressure. Still allowing cracking? Definitely, in partial distress, you will have to allow cracking. Yeah. But, but you are relying on the compression force from the cable in the stays themselves. To eliminate the tension. To, to eliminate, reduce the tension reinforcement. Now, uh, uh, for the maximum tension in the cable, if you've got the cable there, that will be allowable. Yes, you can see this in the uh, position. No, we, did, we, we didn't do specific. We made sure that it falls beyond the design stress of the cable. Uh, the so the this maximum pressure. This was already checked. Yes. If you've got the maximum tension, then you can tell so This is not the, the maximum tension. The tension might increase when you add the other load combinations. So this is not the final. This is just the initial pre-tension force. It's not necessary to be the maximum tension But we have keys for right row. Yes, yes. We, 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 we tried one of the load combinations, but uh, not, this not yet others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still missing the lateral loads, the size, as you mentioned, as the size may be still missing some load combination. We need to try, like, oh, okay, okay. all of those. All of these. <laughs> <laughs> what did you show us then? Uh, this is the uh, strength one. one. Oh, we're not sure if this is the maximum tension that we will be subjected to or not, so we still need or to run. to try all other combinations. Yes. Sure. yes. And <laughs> so far, based on this little combination, what stress ratio you've got? The relation between the tension and the cable and its capacity. So it falls in uh, 2 to 1, to 2 to 1, sorry, 2 to 1.5 uh, back to 6. Yeah, the maximum. Oh, okay, okay. Ranging from 1.5 to 2 times. Also, we might change the initial cable dimensions. Thanks for your presentation. I got a few questions for you. Uh, first, you picked the fan option for modeling the cables, right? Shown us and the preliminary dimension slide, uh, all the fan, all the cables are meeting <coughs> in a single point. Of course, this is in the model; it's not going to be like that. In reality, of course, was not feasible uh, to have these all these cables coming from a single point. Uh, in reality, uh, the cables will have a spacing of around uh, in range of around uh, 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters. <coughs> However, in the analysis of the model, we found out that it's going to induce a very slight. Uh, we have changed the very slight difference so that so we modeled that uh, we modeled that cables as you mentioned. How, how many cables do you have on each side? For example, the back side. The back side is seven. And, and, uh, and the next span is 16. 16 spaced at 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters. That would make more than 10 meters, right? Doctor, let me add something please. In the book, it's, uh, it's indicated that if you let the space in between the cables above and the column, uh, it means that we do some time, we can uh, make uh, initial modeling, we can use it as a fan system here with one. So we don't yet yeah, show about the space in the of the body. Because if it's like if it's like this, if the distance between cables is, is so large, so we cover by like, 10 meter bias on the pile, so this will affect your forces, definitely. So we need to like find you the one later for something like that. And of course, uh, you have to add the detail to show us in the stuff and don't the detail uh, for anchorage of those cables. Okay, of course. Uh, 
The next question relates to an incident that happened in the U.S. Uh, three or four years ago. There was uh, a bridge called uh, Interstate 35 Minnesota Bridge that collapsed uh, during rush hour. And the reason for collapse of that bridge was construction loads. So basically, you accounted for construction loads during construction. Yes. Right? When the bridge is a can't segmental cantilever bridge. Yes. However, there is a maintenance case where we close one lane of the bridge and we have construction equipment and loads, but this time it's not going to be like a cantilever bridge. This time yes. it's going to be a continuous. I think if the bridge can sustain a construction load in a cantilever way, it could definitely sustain it in a continuous structure. Yes, but the, dif the difference is in the cantilever, the, the size the side where the moments are is different in the cantilever from the, the central support. Area. You mean the maximum moment? The maximum moment. So it's not necessarily exactly the same situation. So I just suggest that you look at this option of adding the construction load on the full bridge for the maintenance case. I believe in the Ashley you will find something like that. The maintenance. Oh, well, there is a military truck in the Ashley. Mm -hmm. So it was in the Ashley 2005. I think uh, the new Ashley one doesn't include any, uh, any special trucks. It's only the HF 90 no, no, the construction load, the maintenance load includes uh, storage of sand uh, dunes or things like that. Material, basically, during construction, plus the truck. So this could uh, actually prove in that bridge that collapsed, it, it is a critical case, but it wasn't accounted for. So you might want to add that one load case to a load from the bridge, to a load from the bridge. Uh, the, set, the third question is about the temperature. Uh, design, the thermal design. So, is your structure determinate or indeterminate? Highly Okay, so that depends on, for the deck, depends on, you have an elastic, it's just a very, very, uh, on one side, on the other side, you have a connection to the pylon. What kind of connection do you have to the pylon? Is it is a fixed connection or a roller hinge connection? They are reconstructed with a lot of years, but that would be years. Okay, so it's a fixed one. Yes. Okay. So uh, you expect to have stresses due to the, the, the temperature gradient in the deck itself, right? Yes. Okay. Besides, for the exterior uh, uh, span, we have the variance, you expect to have some translation yes. on the variance. So you need to design the translation on the variance according to your thermal. That's what I'm saying. You account for that? You account for that? Okay. Uh, another question about the overestimation of the frame modeling option, frame element option, overestimation of longitudinal behavior. So, is it overestimation relative to the area? Yes, relative to the area. Did you check that? Uh, it's the overestimation, because now when we apply the distribution factor, and in the moment, the output moment is for the whole section. What is this one frame element using the section properties? So in order to design each internal and external work alone, we need to apply the distribution factors. This distribution factors, we are taking factor of safety over the factor of safety we already considered in our design. So it overestimates this in the moment. Okay, but there is a built-in overestimation of negative moment for some early elements relative to the frame element. So that's a more global effect. So did you have the results? No. Do you show us next time in the next presentation? The numerical results of the moment, the moment distribution using area method, area element method versus the frame method. Can you do that? Yes. yes. Uh, last question. Probably this is one of your load combinations that you haven't added yet, but it's about the torsional load case. So you have checked stresses under construction loads and under first, and of course you have finished serviceability analysis, and you checked stresses one of the strength load combination, right? But that was for, for flexion, but you haven't checked that for shear and torsion, have you? So, shear and torsion, the way we apply the light load, we apply it in each lane, in the first lane with the multiple basis factor of one. 
and then two lanes, want to place a structure of 0.5, for example, and then three lanes. And then the output is the, is the maximum for the worst of all cases. So it's already built in and the front end analysis? Yes. Okay. So it gives torsion, torsion uh, stresses. So you, you, you've already applied the full life load on one side of the bridge with the other side empty? Well, this is a built-in iteration in the software when you apply uh, really what The way we define life load mm -hmm. is we define the minimum number of plane load. And then we define the maximum number of plane load. And then with the, the, with the multiple process factor okay. that accounts for the torsion. So it gives yeah. us for the torsion, uh, for example, I think the worst case, okay. the two sides, the one side is only laid, mm -hmm. and the other side is not. So it's been done already. Yes. But if you look at the shear stress, no. shear torsion stress, so that might change, affect a little bit the amount, if the amount of reinforcement you add for torsion hits a certain limit, you have to increase the, the web thickness a little bit. 